Are your fat fingers putting a damper on your guitar progress? If so, you are absolutely in the right place. Let's do this. Hi there, I'm Thomas Michaud from Real Guitar Success, where I help you learn guitar and love the process. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that little bell so I can send you some more guitar lessons and tips. Learning a skill like playing guitar can be overwhelming sometimes. There's just a lot of things to learn, of course. Making your chords, getting your fingers in the right place, changing from one to the other, strumming smoothly, and so on. Nothing is more frustrating than getting your fingers there on the chord, looking like everything is just right, and your fingers touch the other strings. They're too big. They don't fit. Well, don't fret. I can't believe I said that. Don't worry. If this is a problem you're having, we're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with it once and for all. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you many ideas, techniques, and tips on how to deal with thick fingers when playing the guitar. What I want you to do is watch through the whole video, especially to the end, and then pick and choose some that you want to experiment with or try out and see which ones work best for you. I'm going to start off by talking about the neck of the guitar. Now, guitars come with different widths of neck. And the wider the neck, of course, the easier it is to get your fingers in between the strings. Now, the most obvious difference is between what I'll call a classical guitar, a nylon string guitar, which has the very wide neck, and a steel string guitar, which are generally thinner in neck, though even within those, they're different sizes. The classical guitar is easier to get fat fingers in between, but I wouldn't rule out the steel string just yet. Another option, if you really like the sound of the steel string, is to get a 12-string guitar. This is a, a fairly little-known trick. And then only string it like a 6-string. The 12-string is wider. The neck is wider because it's meant to have all 12 strings. But by only putting 6 strings on, you'll have more space between each of the strings. Now, even within the steel string guitar, there are different widths, and you can try out in a music store some different guitars and check it out. Take a look at this chart. Now, you'll see that there are different widths all the way from very thin, by the way, electric guitar is some of the thinnest necks usually, all the way to very thick, which is the nylon string type guitars. That could be an option for you, but it's not the only option. Regardless of which guitar you're playing on, it makes a difference on how you place your fingers on the string. Let me mention that when you look at your finger, it's wider this way and thinner this way. Can you see that? If you look at my finger, it's wider. So when you finger a chord, I'll use a D chord as an example, if you angle your fingers slightly, you're going to have a little more room to get them on the string without touching the other strings. Of course, this takes practice and experimenting. So you can't walk into a store, grab a guitar, and say, oh, my finger's touching the other strings. This guitar is too thin for me. You see, there's more to it. If you practice angling your fingers more, you may find a guitar that didn't work at first, or at least when you put your fingers down to touch the other strings, you could get it to where it didn't. So the other thing is keep in mind that as you practice and play longer, your fingers get tougher on the tips. And that means, along with easier to play and less pain, as you press down, your fingers don't spread out as much because they're tougher, they're harder. That's what I'm trying to say, harder. So just by playing for longer, it's actually just naturally becomes easier. And then the third thing about finger placement is really angling your fingers up and then back down so they go straight down on the neck or as straight as possible. A lot of students, and I've seen this over and over, angle their fingers even though they, don't, they think they're going straight up and down. And that angle naturally touches another string. The more angle, the more likely you're going to touch another string. And again, that's an aspect of practicing and getting the little fine adjustments in making the chords so that you can get them up and straight down on the neck. By the way, another benefit of this is it actually takes less strength to make the chord when your angle is nice and sharp like that, going straight down, because it's easier to press down without using too much muscle. So we've covered the possibility of having wider and thinner necks with different guitars, and also just in the general technique of how you make your chords or how you press down on the strings. 
Now, the third thing I want to talk about is actually the way you form the chord. There are different ways that you form chords that might be better if your fingers are thicker. I've seen on the extreme, somebody with such big fingers, they could press two strings at once, so they didn't need two fingers side to side. They would make a chord by pressing two strings at once and then use the other finger somewhere else. That's always a possibility. Let me show you a few examples of that. One of the most obvious is that I use myself is the A chord. This is a common way to form the A. It involves getting all three fingers right next to each other. Now, there's no way I could make them completely even, so I have to angle them to get them in there. But if your fingers are thick, this is a really tough way to make an A chord. Another way to do this is to take off the third finger, put the first finger over two strings at once, and use that second finger to cover the second string. I'm on the second fret here. So the first finger now is covering the fourth and third strings, both. And the second finger is covering the second string. I use this all the time. It's actually easier for me to get to this form than the traditional, I'll call it, form or the common form. Now, to make this work for me, I have to use, I have to buckle my knuckle there so I can cover both of those strings. Maybe if your finger is big enough, you can actually press it down on a thin neck guitar and get both strings at once without having to buckle the knuckle. You can try and experiment with that. Another option that's less common but does work for some people is to move all the fingers around and use the second, third, and pinky. The pinky's thinner. And so by making the chord this way, it takes less space. That's kind of an in-between option. Now let me show you some versions of an E chord. This is a very common way to make an E chord. So if this is a hard version because of your thick fingers, you might want to try moving everything around and using your second, third, and pinky together. Again, the pinky is smaller, so it's easier to get the third and pinky together than the second and third fingers on those strings. The other advantage of this form, by the way, is that as you move up, you put the bar down and you've got a bar chord. So it's a natural transition into playing bar chords. I often use this with students just to practice it to prepare them for playing bar chords. Now, here's another version that I can't do, but might work for you. If your fingers are big enough and your guitar neck is on the thinner side, you can use the first finger for the first fret of the third string, and then one finger to cover both the fifth and fourth strings. Oh, I can do it. I've never played it before. <laughs> it works. So I'm playing the entire E chord with just two fingers. Experiment. See if one seems easier to you. Take into account that anything you do is going to take practice. Let's do the D chord now. This is a D chord that I often use. And again, even for me to make this, I have to make sure my angle's good going up and down and slightly angled this way so that the, the, I'm not completely flat against the string. But another option is to just use two fingers. Press one finger over all three strings, the first finger, second fret, I'm covering one, two, and three. I'm leaving four open. Now the second finger can go down and press the second string, third fret. Oh, that, that sounds better. <laughs> two finger D. Now you see, it doesn't matter so much. I don't have to get my fingers in there quite so much. So it's a little easier for me to make this chord. You'll still have the problem with the second finger if it's touching one of the other strings. And the trick is to get it as much as possible sideways as opposed to this way, because it's thinner this way. So those are just three examples, along with some ideas on how to form the chords a little differently if your fingers are thicker, and that does depend on how wide the neck of your guitar is. What I want to do is give you the principles that you could use to experiment and practice. And you can always look on YouTube and find other ways to form a chord that you're particularly having a problem with. Again, don't rule out that with practice, you could actually form it in a way that didn't seem to work the first time around. And finally, number four, is I want you to know that it's very likely you will be able to adapt more than you think you can, especially if you're in the early stages. I am amazed at what I could do a year from when I started playing guitar compared to when I first started and I had all kinds of ideas of just what wasn't going to work. The truth is with practice, patience, and persistence, you will be able to do things you didn't even think you could do, probably didn't even imagine you could do. So what I'm saying is that what seems hard right now, maybe buzzing strings, might be just a matter of practicing, persistence, and keeping at it, and making fine adjustments as you go along. It's important to be patient, and consider that this is probably gonna take longer than you thought 
because that's what I hear from most people. A lot of students think it's going to be much quicker than it is to learn and play guitar. It's really not a problem unless you think it is. It's just keeping with it, staying with it, and not making it a problem that it takes longer and takes practice. The good news is, from my experience, most overcome any problems with fat fingers or small fingers or whatever they think is their problem. And I've seen student after student eventually be able to do something fairly easily that they thought at first they just couldn't do because their hand was too small, too big, or some other thing that they couldn't change. What you can change is practicing and sticking with it and keep making small adjustments. You can't make your fingers longer, thinner, thicker, whatever. So now, go ahead and experiment which whatever of these ideas or techniques seem to be most attractive to you. And then try some others as time goes on and see which ones work for best for you. You'll find your own unique solution based on your practice and experience. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you tremendously to play beautiful music on your guitar and love the journey on the way to getting there. Don't underestimate that. Just enjoying the journey and being present to each of the steps along the way as you learn and grow. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so I can make sure you don't miss a thing. And also, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know how you enjoyed this video. If there's something else you'd like to learn, I may be able to make a video out of it. And if you have a question that I can answer to help you on your guitar journey. Thanks again for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.